So the last tutorial, we actually ended making a sign that has an on-click event that allows us to buy pumpkins by just right-clicking on the sign. Now, in pretty much all my tutorials, you might have seen me carrying this command manual around. And the command manual can do so much. It can simply move you to survival mode or can move you to creative mode, of course. But it can also just teleport you to locations, even the engine room. And it can even start and stop the game, pause, go to next day or reset the round to round one. So in this tutorial, I will actually show you how to make a written book. And it's going to be a little bit shorter than usual, but it's definitely going to be really, really useful. So let's simply start with a command block. And we'll start with give to player a written book. Now, this is a very basic command. This will just simply give me a book. But of course, you want to make sure that nobody in survival can actually access this. So we're going to add a little bit extra. We're going to add game mode is creative. And this will help me a lot. As long as I'm in creative, I can get just a written book. But if I would be in survival, nothing will happen. Now, this is a very dangerous command, just as it is right now, because as admins, we can actually grab a book. But the problem is, if someone is in the lobby and he steps on this and I'm nearby, he will give me a book because I'm be the nearest player with a creative role. So therefore, we're going to add one more rule. And that's, of course, the distance rule. And the distance rule, you're going to use that a lot. The distance is really important. So the distance rule is going to be two. That means we're not going to give it to the nearest player with creative, but also he needs to be within two blocks of the block. Now, if I would stand here, nothing would happen. But if I would stand here, I'll get the book. You can play a little bit around with this. Three would be maybe a little bit better. And I think a max of five will be the range. You can actually click on the button. We can give it a lot of extra data. And a book actually takes a pages command. And that one actually does take the brackets. And of course, in here, you can give it so much more. For example, enchantment ID is fire aspect level five. Now, if we would just create this book, we'll have a written book original with fire aspect five, which just made your book really, really, really overpowered. But we're actually not going to care about the enchantments. I already put pages down. A book pretty much exists out of pages. And of course, a title. And if you want, an author. Now, the author is going to be Reaper Iru, and the title is going to be Teleportation Manual. Now, I'll have a teleportation manual by Reaper Iru. So that's really simple. Of course, all we're going to care about is the pages right now. Now, the pages actually exist pretty much out of this system. You'll have the brackets, which will encapsulate the pages itself. And then you also have another set of brackets if you want to have multiple things on one page. Of course, you can go directly with these brackets if you only want one thing on one page. But if you want multiple things, we just go back to the normal JSONs and we'll have a system like this, which might be a little bit confusing, but if you've worked with JSON before, overall, it's not going to be that interesting. And let's start with a title of our book. Let's say text, test, like that. Since we have a test, let's put it to a test. And we simply have test on a test like this. We'll also do exactly the same. Or you can use the escape brackets, which is pretty much the old way. And that will be like this. They'll all do exactly the same. The difference will be actually when we're going to start adding more things. You will want to escape your quotations because you want it to be lines. But you also want to be able to actually use quotations itself. So let's simply say they're commands. And then we're going to the next line. So now let's make a teleportation. Let's go to the town hall and let's give it a color, gold. And as you can see, we now have town hall. Now, as you can see, these are actually pasted together and we don't want that. And that's exactly why I always love to do it like this. With double backslash, you can actually add a new line. And you need to do a double one because else the command will expect you to close this specific text element. And if you escape the first one, you can then actually use it to generate the next line. And if we now grab a new teleportation manual, you'll see it actually took a new line. Now, there's a lot of more commands we can give it. We can actually say bold is true. Now you see it's actually pasted in bold. Now, what I actually want is actually two times a new line that will give it a bit more space. And now I would actually like to have a click event that when I click on town hall, I'm going to teleport there. So that's going to be really interesting. Just another comma. And then we're going to do click event. And what we did learn last time, click event will require two things. It will require an action and it will require a value. And if we need something to have multiple things, we always have an extra set of brackets. And we can just do action. It's going to be a run command and we're going to just escape them properly again comma value 
And we're gonna first test it by simply saying, say hi. There we go. And in chat you'll see, say hi. So it definitely did something. You can just simply click it, town hall, say hi. So that works perfectly. So let's complicate that command a little bit. Teleport, player, 35, 5, 50, minus 143.5. Of course, the command starts with a dash the other way around. So let's put it right there. And let's teleport. That was not a town hall, by the way. But it did work perfectly. So we have a little teleport command. And let's put it a little bit higher, 70. And let's try that again. Looks a lot better already. Well, this looks like a town hall to me. But I'm looking the other way. So that I don't want that. You can actually give more tags to the teleport command. You can also give the rotation. Facing 180, rotation zero. These two always go together, so without it, it won't work. We well, can just add it right here, of course. 180, zero. So we'll take the book now. I'll be actually looking at the bonfire. Now, say we want to actually give myself some extra money. And at this point, our command's getting really large. So maybe it's better if we switch to Notepad, because normally I would really use an extra tool, actually, to keep going this way, because then I can really see much easier and copy-paste much easier easier what I really want. Now I really love using Notepad++. It's pretty much my job to work in here as a programmer. So if we take our command now, it's already really long. So we want to cut it up a little bit. And you always want to use tab because when you use tab, you actually don't really copy a space later. So if we put it like this, it might become more confusing, but it might also become more logical. So what we're going to try now is actually we're going to just simply copy this part. And you know that's the whole page part. And we're going to paste it right here. And let's call this teleportation. And let's change the color to aqua. And let's call this cheats. And we're going to simply say tons of gold. And we'll keep the color gold. So let's give this a little test. As you can see, town hall is aqua. Next page is going to have cheats, tons of gold. So that's going perfectly. Now, something really important, when something works, make a backup. If you lose a code and you make a little mistake, you can always go back to the backup. Of course, we don't want this to be teleport. Since we use currency as our money, we can just simply do scoreboard players at S, which is the executing player, currency 500. Now, as you can see, the currency is our money. We can buy the pumpkin pies with it. If we press tons of gold, we now have 505 currency. So this is exactly why we use Notepad, because we can instantly and very quickly copy paste a whole part and then actually just add it again and also add new elements. So one more thing I want to show you about teleport. Now, as you can see, we have multiple, so we have multiple worlds. If we want to actually make sure that we teleport to the right world, you can add a little bit of an extra command. This is our teleportation command. So let's go execute as executing player in Minecraft. And you saw the world name was SO1, A01 run teleport. With this command, we can actually teleport to a specific world and then the courts. So whether I'm in actually the correct world and almost dead, by the way, or I traveled to the spawn world and I would actually teleport. Normally, if the command is not correct, with the old command, we would probably plummet to our deaths somewhere in the spawn world. Well, that wasn't too bad. But with the new command, even if I'm here, I can simply teleport to the correct world as well. So that's an extra bonus to actually go cross world. So then we have an execute if command for that. Now, of course, now it's really easy for you to actually make a better book like that with all the things you've learned so far. You can do the several pages and you can do a lot of fun things with this. I hope you learned something. I'll put the entire code in the description so you can actually play with it from that point, of course. And hopefully you can now make your own manual that will help you navigate your own servers. Or for example, put your favorite mod commands in there and everything so you just have everything in a quick guide. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next guide.